Hello, it's Sonya here with The Pretty Stitch. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time joining me, I'm so happy to have you here. So today is Wednesday and that means it's the stitch of the week. So for today's stitch, I am using my H hook or five millimeter hook and I have some number four yarn or worsted weight and we are going to be doing a Tunisian stitch pattern and it's like a Tunisian puff stitch. So I have a little fuzzy on there. Let me get that off. There we go. So yeah, it's a Tunisian puff stitch. It's very puffy, but it looks really, really neat. It almost looks like a giant knit stitch when it's done in a way. So to do this stitch, if you were doing, let's say, a scarf or a blanket or anything, you know, that's a little bit longer, I would highly recommend a Tunisian hook. And those are longer or they're corded, but I'm just doing a little swatch so we can use a regular straight hook. So if you just want to practice this stitch, you don't have to break out the big Tunisian hook for that. Or if you don't have one, you don't have to go out and buy one to practice. I just recommend a regular straight hook like this. And so to do this stitch pattern, what you're going to do, you're going to need to chain a multiple of three and add one. So why don't we chain 10? Okay, so I have my 10 chains. Now, if you've never done Tunisian before, I can link a playlist below that teaches you uh, the basics of Tunisian, uh, how to start, the, uh, how to, you know, the basic stitches. There's a couple basic stitches that you should know um, that, you know, walks you through the steps. And if you are a pretty seasoned crocheter, you should have no trouble picking up Tunisian. So anyway, to get started, we are going to work in the back bump of the chain. I usually like to work in the back bump when I'm doing Tunisian. I just think it looks a little bit neater and tidier. So we're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook. Now when you do this stitch, you do want to be a little bit looser when you work. You don't want your... Usually um, you want your stitches, you know, fairly close to your hook, like tight on your hook, more snug. This one, you don't, you can be a little more relaxed. You don't want it to be like this, but if it's a little bit looser like that, it's quite all right. All right, so we're going to insert our hook into the second chain from our hook, and we're going to yarn over, pull up a loop. So we're going to yarn over again. We have two loops on our hook. And we're going to go right back in that chain, pull up a loop. So now we have four. We're going to yarn over again, go right back in that chain, and pull up a loop. We're going to keep doing that until we have ten loops on our hook. So the first row is a little bit tricky, and this stitch, it's not hard to do, but you do have to be mindful. So it's not one that you can just like speed through or half pay attention. You kind of need to pay attention to it, but it's once you get into the rhythm of it, it's not too bad. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to keep going. We want to have 10 loops in our hook. So that will give us eight. And she gets a little crowded, but that's okay. We want it to be like that. All right. So we have 10 loops. We can just check to be sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so we are going to skip our next chain and we're going to work into the next one. So this beginning puff, this is a beginning puff, so it's going to be slightly different than the rest of the puffs in your row, so just keep that in mind. It's not terribly different, but it's just um, slightly different. So we're skipping this guy, we're going to go into the next chain, and we're going to pull up a loop, just like regular Tunisian. Now we're going to chain one. And we're going to go right back into that stitch and pull up a loop. So we have two loops. So this is a separate, so you don't, we're not, um, I mean, it's together, but it's not. So this is, it's one group here. This is going to be another group. So you're going to have groups of 10 all across your hook. So we have two loops here. So now we're going to yarn over and now we start the yarn overs for this one. We're going to go right back in and we're going to keep doing this until we have 10 for the second group. So one, two, three, four, eight, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's a lot of loops on the hook. So this 
stitches. A little bit of a yarn eater, but it, it looks really nice though when it's done. And also with this one, you do need to get a couple rows in. So in the beginning, you're going to be like, um, I don't think so. This is ugly or it's a mess. I'm not sure what's happening. So I just encourage you to work at least five rows before you completely, you know, disregard the stitch and say I'm never doing it again. <laughs> All right, so let's keep going. We are going to skip the next stitch and we're going to go into the next one. Pull up our loop. So we pulled up our loop. We're going to chain one. So after the first grouping, we are always working that chain one. And we're going to go right back in. We're not yarning over for yet. So after you chain one, you're going to go back in that same stitch, pull up a loop, and we have two loops. Now we start our yarn overs. The reason why we don't start our yarn overs right away is because we want to have the 10 stitches. And if you don't, if you do start your yarn overs right away, you it always ends up with an odd number and you want the 10. The 10 is important. <laughs> All right, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. Okay, so we've got our 10 on there. We're just gonna keep repeating this across, skipping the next one, jumping into the next stitch, pulling up a loop, chaining one, going right back in that stitch, pulling up a loop. So we have their two loops in this next group. And now we start the yarn overs until we have our 10 loops. So there's four, six, eight, and 10. So it is a little bit tricky in the beginning working this first row. As you can see, lots and lots of loops on there. All right, so we're just gonna keep doing this till we get to the end and we're already at our end here. We've got a little hair or something. I don't know what's going on, a fuzzy. Let's get that out of there. All right, so we're at our last stitch and we're just going to do the same thing at our last stitch. And this is the forward pass. So we pulled up our loop, chained one. With Tunisian, there's always two steps, your forward pass and your return pass. So two steps, so this is row one. So each row has two steps. I think I messed that up there. Yeah, I started the yarn over too fast. See what happened? Then I had three stitches. I knew that was wrong. So I had the chain one. So now I go back into that stitch, pull up a loop. Now I do the yarn overs until I have my 10 loops. We have one, two, three, four, six, eight, and ten. So this, yes, yeah, I said this first row. She's a little bit tricky, but we can, we have our groups here. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So it just looks like a whole bunch of loops right now. All right, so now we need to work these guys off. So what we're gonna do is we are going to yarn over and we're gonna pull through five loops. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. There's the break there, the middle. We're gonna pull through these five. So yarning over. So you might wanna just take your time Then you can check and see how many are left. So one, two, three, four, five, six. This loop um, is the one on their hook. You can even just do that. So don't count this loop. This is your working loop here. So how many do we have left? One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, we got one more to go. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we've got our five loops. We worked off these five. So now we're going to chain one. And now we just pull through the rest 
of those. So now it's going to be six loops, but we're going to pull through this one and then the rest of the five here. So as I said, it's a little bit tricky in the beginning, but as you get going in the stitch, uh, it's, it gets a whole lot easier. So just bear, you know, just grit your teeth, get through that first row. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four, five. So this, we're gonna pull through this first group here in between my fingers. So yarning over. And let's see if we did oh, one more. Oh, no, that is five. Okay. I can't count. <laughs> All right. So after you pull through your five, we're going to chain one and then pull through the remaining five. There we go. So we've got two groupings worked off and you're just going to repeat that across. Okay, so now I chain one, pull through the remaining five, so we're almost to the end here. So yarning over, we're going to pull through five loops. Chaining one, pull through the remaining five loops. And we're at our last grouping there. All right, so one, two, three, four, five. So we chain one and pull through the rest of those. So we persevered, as I said, it really doesn't look like much. It kind of just looks like a mess. She's kind of curling and it's just kind of a hot mess right now but just as I said hang in there get like five rows in before you completely disregard the stitch <laughs> all right so let's get ready for our next row and this will be the repeat for the remaining of the, for the remainder of the pattern so what you want to do is you're going to find that chain one in the middle there and you're going to insert your hook into that chain one space pull up your loop And now see we have two loops for starting off here so now we can start the yarn over right away. This is our setup puff here. So we have four, we want to have the ten on there, five, or I mean six, eight, and ten. So we've got our ten loops on our hook. So now we go to the next grouping. Find that chain one space, insert our hook in there. Pull up a loop. We're going to chain one. Go right back in that space. Pull up a loop. So we have our two loops. Now we yarn over and keep going, yarning over until we have our ten loops. So there's our 10 and I'm trying to keep my stitches, I'm used to working more tightly so I'm trying to keep a little bit more relaxed. You want to be more relaxed with this stitch. Alright, so we go to the next grouping here and do the same thing. Insert our hook in that stitch, pull up a loop, chain one, jump back in there, pull up a loop, two loops, now we start the yarn overs and keep pulling up loops until we have 10 loops. Okay, there we go, and we'll just keep going. I got two more groupings left.
So as you can see the second row, she's a little bit easier because you're just working in that chain one space instead of that little teeny tiny chain. <laughs> All right, so we are at our last stitch, finding that chain one space and just completing the last puff there. All right, so we have completed our second row. So now we are going to work these stitches off just like we did for row one. So you're going to yarn over, pull through five loops. So it should be a little bit easier since with the second row and in the remaining rows. Okay, so here's the break there. So I'm going to pull through these five loops here. All right, so I pulled through the five and I'm going to chain one and I'm going to pull through the remaining five and just keep going across my row here. Work that chain one. And we're at our last grouping here. And there we go. So it's starting to look a little better, but still not looking super great. So as I said before, get like five rows in and then see what you think about the stitch. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna keep working a couple more rows and I will meet you back so you can see a larger swatch. All right, so I have worked a couple more rows. I've worked six rows so you can really see how the stitch starts to pop out. And to me, it almost looks like a giant knit stitch and knitting in a way. And the nice thing with this stitch is with most Tunisian stitches, they are not reversible. This one kind of is. So here it is on the other side. So I, you know, would consider this more reversible, which is nice because Tunisian stitches um, typically are not reversible so you're probably wondering how to finish this guy off so what you are going to want to do to work these stitches off is you're going to want to insert your hook into that chain one space there and work that slip stitch to work that off then you're going to go in between your puffs here, in between there, put, insert your hook, pull up your loop, and then just pull through. And then you'll go back into that chain one space. And you want to be more relaxed when doing this. And then go in between the stitches. Yeah, I'm so relaxed that the loops are flying out of, uh, off my hook there. So don't be too relaxed <laughs> in that chain one space, in between the stitches. So this is, I mean, it's kind of a fun stitch. It's, you know, definitely it is a little bit more time consuming because of all the loops and yarn overs and then the last chain one space. And then you can cut your yarn there. Um, so I think this stitch would be fun to incorporate with other stitches, uh, let's say in a blanket or a scarf, um, so you wouldn't have to work the whole project in this stitch pattern. But I think it's a fun stitch pattern. Uh, it looks neat. And I mean, th this is only six rows and we've already got a, a decent, so you could work up a scarf pretty quickly, I think, with this stitch. 
but it does use a, a bit of yarn, so you do want to keep that in mind with your yardage and stuff. But I hope you enjoyed this Stitch of the Week, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.